I oversee the 4-H animal science program here for the state of North Dakota. We are so excited that you guys are joining us. If you're just joining us, continue to put in that chat box uh, where you're joining us from. We are so want to know where on earth you're coming in from. Um, just curious, you're going to see a poll pop up on your page. And I just want to get an idea of who's all joining us tonight. So go ahead and put you know, your age, if you're a parent, maybe you're a 4-H leader or an extension agent or specialist. We wanna know um, what's the majority on our call tonight so we can get an idea of who's all joining us. I'm here in Fargo, North Dakota. All right, Boulder County. Some more Colorados. Oh, Missouri, excellent. Thank you guys so much for putting your, your states and where you're from. It's pretty exciting to see. Oregon, excellent. Pretty excited to see where you guys are all joining us from. Well, while you guys are putting in uh, your ages and what where, where you guys are um, coming, maybe you're a 4-H specialist, I'm gonna kind of talk through what we're gonna do today. We're gonna, this is a virtual series that we're doing. And so it's kind of exciting opportunity while we're in this virtual reality. So it's a perfect way for us to help you guys learn a little bit of tips, tips and tricks about showmanship. And so today we're gonna be discussing goat showmanship. So we'll cover meat and dairy. Uh, Mr. Rick Smith out of Oliver County will be our host tonight, going over and sharing his expertise and wisdom. So we're really excited to hear from him today. We'll cover some training and grooming aspects. We'll cover our showmanship videos that we shot for both dairy and meat. They will be separate videos to kind of showcase the differences for those uh, opportunities for you guys. Um, talking about different movement and positions. And then we'll talk a little bit about you as a showman um, and you know some of the expectations of you and your responsibilities. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to put them in that chat. We're gonna have people monitoring those questions at all times. And then that will allow us to know, you know, if you don't get your question answered right away, we'll, we're writing them down and we'll make sure we'll do our best to get those answered. And um, so make sure you keep your mics muted just out of respect for our presenter and everybody else on the call. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end this polling really quick and share the results with you. So you'll pop up and see that um, we have quite a few 12 to 14 year olds on this call, pretty exciting. We got some parents, welcome parents and some 4-H and FFA leaders. So we're really excited that you guys are joining in today. And with that, I think I will let Mr. Rick Schmidt take over. Well, welcome everybody. As I look at the poll and I see that about 71% of our group is going to be under the age of 14. Um, I think that this is an opportunity for everybody to um, sit back and maybe take a few notes about what it takes to be in the, the goat shows, whether it is the dairy or the meat goats. And um, we do give you an opportunity to ask questions as we get to the end of the uh, presentation here tonight. And we definitely appreciate those comments that come in. Um, thanks again, uh, Leanne and uh, the rest of the team that we've had to work on this project. Uh, I think we do have a really neat uh, program here for the evening, and um, I hope that you all enjoy it. Let's kick it off a little bit about goats. Goats are probably one of the most entertaining animals that any youth can exhibit. Um, I think that they're unique from the standpoint that they all have a personality. Um, they're cute, and uh, kids just like being around them. So let's talk next about how do you pick the right goat? How do you treat that goat from a, a nutrition standpoint to make sure that you have a successful program at the end of the year as you get to your 4-H achievement days or the, the big livestock show that you wanna participate in? First of all, I have a little bit of a quote that uh, we can make an animal into a good, average or poor quality animal based on the way that we feed them. And you basically have to start with a quality animal. And if you have an animal that is structurally correct, round ribbed, have a, a good structure with their feet and legs, they have the genetics to really grow into a, a pretty special animal. Then I think the next thing is that we come down to how well you feed that animal. 
So the question is, is that what do you feed that goat? Keep in mind that as goats age or they get older and heavier, the one thing that does change in their diet is the protein requirements will go down. So starting out, many kids are going to buy goats in that 40 to 60 pound range, or maybe even in that, you know, 25 to 60 pound range. And so you want a protein in that ration that is going to be somewhere in the 14 to 16 percent protein. They will be consuming maybe two pounds of feed per day. Um, and as they get older, they will eat more feed, but also the protein requirements will go down. And so as they get into that 80 to 100 pound range, they're probably going to be consuming about five pounds of feed per day, but a protein level of maybe around 11 to 12. It's important that we get our goats on feed and have them in a good uh, ration basically throughout the time that you have them. You know, whether you buy the complete feeds, um, doesn't matter really which uh, company you like to work with, make sure that the, it's going to uh, pacify the diet or the nutritional requirements of that particular animal. Usually goats do start eating at about two weeks of age. Um, and again, you want to make sure that their, their protein level is based on the age and the weight of that animal. Try not to change feed too often. Um, basically, if you do want to switch from one feed to the next, do that in stages. Maybe introduce a little bit of feed um, into the current ration um, slightly. And it should take approximately a week until you get um, totally converted over to that, that new feed type. We want to make sure that you keep the, uh, the feed clean and always provide good, fresh, clean water um, for those goats at all times. Water needs to be cool because they will consume more at that time. And that's usually what a goat will do is drink water to maintain their body temperature at a lower rate. Nutrition is extremely important. We'll go on to the next slide here. Now that we've got that goat selected, basically we talked a little bit about what a quality goat might look like. We want a goat that's going to have a fairly level top line. We do want them to be square fronted. So basically you should draw a line across their chest floor. They should be wide across the chest floor and then keep their legs basically straight up and down as you view them from the front. Make sure they don't come in at the knee, toe out too much up front because this um, does affect the way that those goats will mature um, as they, they get heavier and they get older. You can't change the structure of an animal um, once, it's, uh, once you've purchased it and uh, uh, basically the structure only gets worse, it does not get better. So start with something that's structurally correct um, as we select those. Again, start training the animals relatively early. Um, usually at three months of age, you can take the goats out on a halter and start, I'm gonna say, having fun because what happens is that they will twist and turn and um, do all kinds of acrobatic moves in the air as we um, get those goats introduced to uh, the halters or choke chains or whatever we're using. And so this is really important from the standpoint that we do not tie goats up and leave them unattended. Um, they are um, an interesting animal and if they can, they can really hurt themselves and then you might be looking for a a different project animal or else you might not have one for the year if you um, leave those unattended. As they become more trained, then you can tie them up for periods of time. Just watch them and as long as they're not startled um, or you know get uh, you know, spooked by some means, once they're trained to be tied up, they do kind of learn where their parameters are at and so then it becomes a little bit safer to tie them up. But, but be very careful because um, they have been known to do foolish things and then we do not have a project um, if, if those mistakes are made. Build the relationship with your goat. Um, they are a personable animal. Um, they will learn to like you. And I think the more that they learn to trust you and that you remain calm when you're around them, the more positive your showing experience with goats are going to be. This is both the same for the dairy goats as well as the meat goats. Go on to the next slide. Developing a routine. Um, again, this is when you take your animals out for a walk. Um, basically, you can uh, 
do it the same time every day, make the, the walks a little bit longer um, every day. Um, some people will say that, um, you know, take them out far away from the yard and they know where home is. They know where the food is at and they know where their safety is at. So sometimes you can just let them loose and let them run back. This might serve as a good way to exercise your animals as well. But remember that really your demeanor around your goat um, as you handle them does reflect on the way that they're going to react to the way that you um, are able to do different things with them. As soon as they learn to trust you, they will um, basically learn to say, yep, yeah, okay, let's just go for a joy walk and uh, make this a positive experience for the both of us. Some things when you're practicing your goat, um, when you're out taking them for their walks or practicing uh, for your fairs or your, your show event, is that remember that questions in showmanship are, they're, they're valid and some judges will ask more questions than others. Um, but one of the most important questions that's asked in any showmanship contest is that, can you identify the faults of your animal? Maybe your goat is a little bit weak topped or maybe um, down fronted or whatever. Um, it's important to know what those faults are and do your best job as an exhibitor to try to show those faults out. The young lady here in the picture is saying that maybe her um, goat gets a little bit high in the rump. We like a goat that's fairly level top, the tail is um, fairly level with the back line or the top line, and that the tail should be up um, to give that goat the best appearance that it can. A goat that's stressed will drop that tail down between the, the twist of the animal and it just looks like it's um, not having the most positive experience out there. Anytime you're setting the animals up, make sure you set the feet up square. What I find to be very helpful is when you grab a hold of the feet of that goat to set the feet, pick the feet up below the knee and the goat will have a much less resistance or basically they're not gonna fight you near as much if you grab below the knee to, to place those feet in the position that you want. If you grab at the thigh or right into the leg of the goat, that's when the goats are going to maybe think you're trying to tickle it instead of uh, place its feet in a square position. Goats should be set square, but those feet need to remain comfortable underneath the animal um, at all times. And so practicing that as we uh, train those animals can be very rewarding um, showtime. Preparing the animal. Again, we want to make sure that uh, we start practicing with the, the goats, with the halter or the choke chain, whatever you're gonna use um, for the show, that you start practicing a couple of weeks prior to the, the show so they get used to this. One of the questions that comes up is that, should I be using a halter or a choke chain? And, and it really doesn't make that much difference which, um, piece of equipment that you use as long as you use it appropriately. If you're going to use a halter like the young lady has here, make sure that it's comfortable on the goat's face. The nose strap that goes between the muzzle and the eyes should be halfway between the muzzle and the eyes or else it can actually restrict some of their breathing and so we want to make sure that it, it fits appropriately. If you're going to be using a choke chain, the, the one that goes right underneath of the jaw of the goat, some things to keep in mind is that how you place that chain really depends upon how the goat is gonna hold its head. And so you want it right behind the jaw bones. In the throat of the goat, there's a little space in there that you can place that chain and it's not gonna choke the goat itself. If you drop that chain just a little bit down the neck, the goat will have a tendency to lower its head and fight you as an exhibitor and also have a chance to start coughing. And once the goat starts coughing, it basically loses its show appeal um, at that period of time. So make sure it stays up into that, that throat, right behind the jawbone, and that also helps keep that head up for impressive carriage. Again, never leave your goat unattended um, as, uh, as we're, we're working with these animals. Another thing that can make your showing experience more positive is to Take the goat out, practice loading into the trailer a couple times. Maybe after about the fourth or fifth time, they'll jump up there without any hesitation and uh, they, they basically think it's more of a game and, 
And I've even seen some people use a trailer as a, a pen to put their goats in, and they use that as a, a place to uh, jump up and down um, in and out of the trailer all the time. And then uh, they're, when it comes to showtime, they are just thinking that it's part of the game that they get to play that day. I would say to go back and think about um, something we're not going to talk about in showmanship a lot, but build a playpen for your goats. They are an animal that they are not called kids for no reason. They do like to act like kids. They like a playpen. They give them something to jump on or to jump off of or a ball to roll around in their pen. That keeps them happy. It keeps them occupied. And it also, in the end, keeps your goat healthier. Next, next slide, please. So the nice thing about goats is that we really don't need to have a lot of equipment. We do have different pieces of equipment that can make your goat look more attractive. Um, you do want to have a little bit of a, a like the two inch electric clippers and um, the guards I think are something that can really make fitting a goat more easy for um, especially beginner exhibitors. And we got a slide here to talk about what the length of those um, guards should be that you use in particular areas. We do have um, different pieces of equipment that can be used. Um, we do have the uh, regular choke chain, which is the one in the center of the uh, diagram that you have. We have the tubes that you can put on the market goats. And basically you have the, the sleeves that you can put on for breeding goats as well. You can, they're interchangeable in the goat um, business too, but um, really we use the tubes uh, to kind of um, almost uh, tense up the belly a little bit and it can help shrink a little bit of the extra gut off, but we use them to keep them clean as well as we can help uh, shape the goats as well. In the bottom um, corner is kind of an important piece of equipment and that is the, the hoof trimmer. Um, we've had questions in the previous seminars about how to trim a goat's hooves or how to trim an animal's hooves. Goats are not that hard to do. You basically can make the pad um, flat, but also you can shape that hoof a little bit if there's a little bit of an imperfection in the way that goat is walking. Always start with hoof trimming with an experienced person to show you the ins and outs. If you get a hoof, hoof trimmed a little too close, it can draw blood, and then you've got a goat that might be lame for you know, possibly a week or two. So trimming the hooves two weeks prior to the show time is really important. Other things that you want to keep in mind is we do have this uh, 360 um, brush. Uh, they call it a smart brush that is on the top um, in this diagram. Um, you can use the roto brushes to uh, help with the, the legs or the slicker brushes. Um, those help uh, fit the legs as well. Um, just have some uh, mild soap because you, when you wash them, basically Dawn or Joy dishwashing soap seems to work very well. Um, when we're out uh, washing these goats, you can use um, more livestock oriented products like the Orvis or things like that. But no matter which type of soap you use to wash your goat, make sure that you get them rinsed out um, clean or else it can dry out the skin and cause dandruff. Make sure you got a water pail. Um, adequate feed and hay. Um, and then uh, you can have a blower. Some people are using that to, to um, fit their, their uh, meat goats a little bit and kind of uh, uh, fluff the hair up a little bit. It makes it a little bit more manageable and makes them look like they have more body as well. So blowers are, you can have them, but they're not a necessity. Um, they can help with uh, um, preparing your goats in the, in the breeding class for the, the meat goats. This is a diagram, a little bit about what is kind of an industry example of how goats should be trimmed. And um, again, I think I encourage you to look back at this diagram when you uh, start to do some trimming. Obviously in this diagram, it's showing that we wanna keep the neck relatively short. Um, it should have about a three eighths of an inch of hair um, where it has got the white um, markings here um, down through the chest floor. Uh, we want to have that, that brisket and dewlap kind of uh, cleaned up and give that goat a very feminine, clean front to it. Uh, on the belly, we're at about three-eighths of an inch, so that gets trimmed down just a little bit more. Um, and then the body, we're leaving that 
probably somewhere around five eighths to three eighths or three quarters of an inch long. Um, we trim out the, the hawks. Um, it basically that helps uh, if you're looking at the back leg here, the hawk is usually a spot that the goats might get dirty. And we do take that hair very short. And the other thing that it does is it kind of gives them a straighter leg or a, a cleaner leg, um, which is something that we want as well. You do want to trim the hoof line so you don't have hair that's going down the hoof. And sometimes that will give the goat a bigger hoof, which is desirable as well. Some things to keep in mind is that you notice this white marking or this outline that goes around the the neck of the goat, it stops at the head. Now goats absolutely hate having the hair on their head shaved. And so we do leave the hair long on the heads. And so just find a way to blend that clipper line in um, from the top of the, the neck into the head. And we leave the, the hair long on the ears and the face of, of that goat at all times. We wanna leave the hair on the, the switch of the goat long as well um, in, in the meat breeds. And so um, this diagram can really be an asset when we get into uh, trimming our goats. Again, bathing them and rinsing them a few times prior to showtime definitely helps soften the hair up um, and uh, it, it makes it more manageable. Um, we do like it, uh, I guess I like to have the goats trimmed a couple days in advance. What it does is it, it softens up the, where that hair is clipped and it starts to lay back in its natural position um, at showtime if that is done um, a, a few days in advance. And um, again, use this diagram as a guide, but again, this doesn't mean that this is the only way that you can fit meat goats. Dairy goats are a little bit different. Um, one thing we talked about in the selecting a meat goat is we want to see them really square fronted. We want to see them round ribbed and we're trying to evaluate the structure on them and, and the genetics. And we want them to be really big top. They're big in their loin, big in their rack um, and pretty square in their rump. Now dairy is a whole different game from the way that we fit them and the qualities that we're looking for in a quality goat. In a dairy goat, we want to see a long, clean, neck. We want to see um, a flat rib that's got a lot of spring of rib, but we're not looking for big racks. We don't want to see a goat that looks like it's putting a lot of meat on. Um, those are usually things that take away from the physical appearance of a goat uh, in the dairy industry is to make them look beefy. If they look beefy, you're probably not going to do very well um, in a dairy class. We want them to be sharp. Uh, which means that it's a freeness of fat. Another term that we use in dairy is they should be dairy. That means really no fat. Look in their thighs. If their thighs are flat and incurving um, when you view them from behind. Um, and so those are little things that you can, can think about when you're selecting your goat. But also when we get into clipping and grooming him, we basically body clip the whole goat except for the switch and the head on these dairy goats. Um, leave the, the ha uh, hair long below the knee, but basically the rest of the hair is gonna come off, except for, like I said, the switch and the head and the ears. Try to do this a couple days in advance um, because it, again, it will help start to blend those clipper lines in and uh, give your goat a really nice feminine dairy appearance. Trim the hooves like you would a meat goat, basically flat. You want those goats to be up on their toes and not to where they start to relax in their pastern and to where their dew claws might get close to the ground. And uh, one of the things as a dairy judge, we want to make sure you call these an udder on a dairy animal, not a bag. And the udders are closely shaven. Um, basically what it's going to do is start to emphasize the mammary, um, uh, the glands and the 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 texture of the of the udder, and uh, so we want to make sure that we we clean those uh, udders up very very short um, as we get into preparing them for exhibition. Next slide. 
All right, so I think we are going to move into the videos now. So let me go ahead and change that out. While I'm doing that, I am just curious about the showing of you guys, how many years. So I'm gonna launch another poll while I'm um, gonna unshare this and um, get an, another screen up. So go ahead and answer that poll as they're waiting on me to change up my screen. And I don't know if somebody wants to take over. I know there was a couple questions that Rick could answer right now. Yes, Rick, there is one um, nice quick question. What part of the body is the switch? The switch? Oh, and I do see Travis typed in an answer too, but go ahead. It's usually the tip of the tail. So that's the long hairs at the tip of the tail. We want to leave that, that long. And sometimes we can cut them flat and give them more of a bobbed look, but um, usually go up an inch um, from the end of the tail head and then leave the hair long from that, that standpoint on back. So basically it's making it look like they got a nice bushy broom at the end of their, their tail. One other question, and maybe you're going to address this later on, but what are some tips on keeping market goats walking in the show ring to enhance their body? Practice. <laughs> um, I think it's really important that we, we get those goats a lot of practice. And um, I would say that um, the, the, let's go back to the first question that um, we talked about, and that is the use of a choke chain or a halter. Goats have a tendency to respect the halter better, but I also think that, um, and that's basically from a leading standpoint, they will lead a little bit better with a halter on, but the choke chain choke itself chain. actually will give the goat a better uh, appearance to the judge because it will help hold their head up and keep the nose um, kind of at a little bit of a downward tilt where the halters are going to kind of pull that nose up at times and so that can affect the way that the physical appearance of the goat um, looks at the time. But I, I personally like the choke chains that go right under the jaw of the goat, but the halters actually help you have more control and they do lead better um, from, from using the use of a halter. Thank you, Rick, for answering those wonderful questions. And thank you guys for asking those questions in the chat box. So we're excited. It looks like we've got a lot of first years and second one to two years joining us today. So that's pretty cool. We're excited. Well, Rick, I'm going to go ahead and start this video. Um, if you need me to stop, definitely let me stop for any reason. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, what you guys are going to see and hear um, here shortly. Rick, can you see my screen that it's going to show? Yes, I can. Okay. Perfect. All right. I'm going to mute myself and Welcome to the North Dakota 4-H Meat Goat Showmanship Educational Video. This video is designed to assist youth in learning the ways to become more competitive when exhibiting meat goats. This video is a visual supplement to the North Dakota 4-H Livestock Showmanship Guide, publication GB092. Showmanship is defined as the skill or the ability of a showman. Showmanship starts from the time that you enter the show ring until the time that you exit. Your first impressions are very powerful, so begin strong. The first thing the judge will see is a youth's desire to win. Your body gestures speak volumes. A person who wants to win is one who is confident, however calm. And we do not want you to be overshowing when showing goats or any other species. Some keys to goat showmanship is about how you enter the ring. Traditionally, you will lead in a clockwise fashion, but you want to know the order in which the judge wants you to set up. Get to that location and set your animal up for exhibition quickly and confidently. The first person in line sets the line. Everyone else will follow to make sure that line stays straight. Once you've maneuvered yourself into line, you want to make sure that your goat's feet are set squarely but comfortably beneath them. Then, you do this by reaching over top of the goat, not underneath of the goat, to set the legs. Once the legs are set, you're going to want to make sure that the head is held high for impressive 
appearance to the judge. Do this by placing the choke chain right behind the jawbone of the goat, right into the throat. If it is held in this position, goats will not choke or cough, and so th they will hold their head up high and be alert throughout the show. Again, once you're set up, the next thing you want to do is to make sure that you are between, or you are keeping the goat between you and the judge, and that you want to locate the judge and make sure that they know, that you know where they are at. Keep the line straight at all times. Other things to keep in mind about goat showmanship is it's about how you present yourself. You want to make sure that you're in the official dress code, whether that's your green, gray, white, or yellow shirt with the 4-H emblem on, or other dress code that's acceptable to the show management. You want to make sure you have dark, clean jeans on, hard-soled shoes, and maybe a belt. You want to make sure that your clothes are clean, that you're maybe freshly shaven as a, as a younger boy, or girls have got their hair up so the hair does not come down into their face when exhibiting. It's also about how you present your goat. Your goat needs to be clean. One thing we go out on parade is that goats have a tendency to sometimes not always cooperate the way we want, and so how you maneuver the goat and how well they respond to your commands are important. You do have the right to reach back and grab the switch of the goat if in the event the goat is restricting your intentions to move. But once that goat is cooperating again, you want to make sure that your hands go up to the choke chain or halter um, and keep your hand closest to the goat being in control of that animal. Again, once you're in line, make sure that your goat is set up. If the goat pulls out of line in front of you to go to a different position, all other exhibitors need to pull forward and fill that gap within the line. Some things that are different even in the meat goat industry is that we do fit the breeding classes differently than the market classes. Breeding classes are more fit like a steer where we keep the hair long, use a blower to train the hair to go forward, clip the top so they're flat, and give the um, goat as much body volume and capacity as possible. You would still clip the front shoulder on forward while leaving the hair on the head long. Just find ways to blend those clipper lines in to where it does not look unnatural. In the market meat goat classes, you want to make sure that you body clip the goats. Traditionally, you would leave the an, an inch or two of the switch on the hair below the knees, leave that on, as well as the hair on the head of the goat. Everything else is body clipped. Do this probably a week to two weeks prior to the show to get the hair to grow back and be somewhat natural in the way that it lays. There's also a difference in the way that we exhibit breeding classes versus market classes. Breeding classes, we traditionally will not brace, or if you do, not very hard. On the meat classes, in the market classes, you will brace by keeping the head held up high, leg into the chest of the goat, and have them push slightly forward. You can set the front feet by lifting the front feet just enough to where the front feet set square, but beyond this, the feet need to remain on the ground throughout the remainder of the show. Over bracing your goats have a tendency to, that the goat will get a weak loin, especially between the loin and the hip, and that can be unnatural and actually cause you points during showmanship as well. We have gotten accustomed to using chain halters or other halters to lead goats. Um, this actually gives you more control as an exhibitor because the goats are going to respond better to your commands. However, when leading from the right, you will be required to reach across the head of the goat, which will give you somewhat of an uncomfortable feeling at times. Outweigh the pros and cons of whether a choke collar or a halter is best fit for you. If you are getting into showmanship, you may be asked to uh, switch to a different goat 
and lead that individual. In this particular case, you would make sure that you treat that goat the way that it's, uh, what class it would be in. So if it's a breeding class or a market class, make sure you know the differences in the way to exhibit those. And again, you always want to make sure that the first thing that you do is you set those feet and get the head set and make sure that it's appropriate for exhibition. Goats sometimes do resist the exhibitor. You do want to make sure you stay in line and not cause any disruption to the class. When goats do become unruly, it's important that you do not lose your composure um, because judges are evaluating you on uh, your demeanor as well. You want to make sure that if the goat asks you to, or the, if the judge asks you to move, that you're timely in your responses. Questions are also fair game and goat showmanship. Questions might relate to if you were to change the physical appearance of your goat, what would you change? What does the AGBA acronym stand for? Um, what are you feeding your goat? And you'll want to answer this in ounces or pounds fed per day of the particular feed in which you are, are utilizing. Again, I think the big thing you want to keep in mind about meat goat showmanship, it's really about your mannerisms. Make sure that you are, are being professional. Make sure that the goat's responding to you, that you're responding to the commands of the judge at all times, and that you always keep the goat between you and the judge. As, this goat, as the judge has moved off to the left side of the goats, um, the exhibitors are going to be requested to move to the right side of the goat as they approach the judge to make sure that the judge has a full body view of that animal. This is done in a very natural and calm manner as you move from side to side. Being abrupt is an indication of uncomfort level um, of the exhibitor. Goats have a tendency to want to lead with the exhibitor on the left, and they're more natural. Another thing to keep in mind is that judges will traditionally utilize the same show pattern throughout the day, and so make sure that you follow the first class. So we want you to stay calm and enjoy your goat showing experience. All right, so we have um, a couple questions. I don't know if you want to answer a couple more questions that were awesomely asked when, uh, while I get this other video up and running. Sure, I was uh, watching the chat box and actually I'm glad you guys are asking such excellent questions tonight. Um, a couple of them that I had seen in there is that do you switch sides with the goat? And the answer is yes. Welcome um, to the North Dakota. Always keep the goat between you and the judge, no matter if it's the meat breeds or the dairy breeds. But you do that by going around the front of the head and never go around the back of the goat. I've seen that a few times. Um, and so that, that's one question. Always when we uh, do showmanship, and it doesn't matter which species it is, we always want to make sure that anytime you stop, whether it's head to tail or side by side, but the first thing that you do is you get your goat set square um, and, or comfortable with their feet underneath of them. Um, and that you do that prior to even looking for where the judge is at. I see a question in here about do you use a brush in showmanship? Actually, you do not use a brush in uh, goat showmanship, whether it's meat or dairy. So no, no extra... Um, utensils are, are uh, needed um, during the show itself. Um, that can all be done prior to going in. There was another really good question about what happens if your goat just absolutely does not want its feet touched. I'm going to say some goats are like that. Um, I would say you can make it better with practice. Um, we've had those at times too that they just anytime a judge or somebody comes up and touches them they're jumping up and down. You can do a nice job of putting your hand over top of the, the withers or the basically the rack of the goat and holding it down. And sometimes in time they will, they will um, settle down. But um, sometimes it goes back to goats have a personality 
and some of them have personalities we may not like. All right, thank you so much for answering those questions. We're gonna show the dairy goat showmanship one now. So switching a little bit of different gears, keep those questions coming in the chat box and we'll answer more of those here in just a few minutes. The 4-H Dairy Goat Showmanship Educational Video. This video is designed to assist youth in learning the proper methods and practices to becoming more competitive in the goat showmanship arena. This vis video is a visual supplement to the North Dakota 4-H Livestock Showmanship Guide, publication GB092. Remember goat showmanship is determined from the time that you enter the show ring until the time that you exit the show ring. The first thing that you're going to do is know where you're supposed to go in, upon entering the ring. Get into line relatively quickly and at this time make sure that the first thing that you do is set your goat up for the judge to view. This is done by setting the rear feet, then the front feet, and then having the head held up high in impressive carriage. Goats are to be having their feet set by reaching over top of the goat instead of underneath. Another thing to keep in mind is that goat showmanship is traditionally done while standing throughout the whole show. Squatting down might be appropriate if you're a really tall kid. However, younger individuals or um, shorter individuals should remain standing throughout the show. Judges are looking to see how well your goat res responds to your commands. Does it lead on command or does it resist your, your hints as to when to move and, and uh, how fast you're to move? Use a choke chain or a halter to maneuver your goat about the ring. Halters can be used, um, but this, because these actually give an advantage to the exhibitor because the goats do respond more appropriately with the halter on. However, um, when you move to the right side, it makes getting used to, to know how to position your hands and your body when reaching across the goat. The other device that is more commonly used is the, the choke collar. Make sure that that choke collar is placed right behind the jaw bones of the goat. This will help in keeping the goat's head held up high. It will help uh, preventing the goat from choking um, as if it gets too low on the, the neck, the goat has a tendency to drop its neck as well as start to cough at times. It's also important to make sure that your goat is well presented. Make sure it's clean of any straw or foreign matter. Also, it needs to be properly clipped. Dairy goats traditionally are clipped from the front shoulder on forward while leaving the hair on the face and head long. It does take practice to blend in the hair on those uh, from the shoulder into the, the neck as well as from the throat into the head. But practice does, um, does help as well in, in getting those goats looking professional. Also, you would do some trimming around the tail of the, of the goat to make it look flatter and cleaner made. Again, goat showmanship is about how much work the kids put into these projects. They have no advantage during a showmanship contest. Make sure that you look professional and ready to exhibit your goat. Make sure that your shirt is clean, the appropriate dress, whether it's the green, gray, yellow, or white shirt with the 4-H emblem on, dark jeans, hard-soled shoes, and belts are preferred. As judges each have their own unique way about judging, a few of them do ask questions. Questions can relate to if you were to make your goat more competitive, what would you change about its physical appearance? What are you feeding your goat? How much does a dairy goat produce in pounds of milk per day? How accurate and how confidently you answer them will add points to your show's showmanship score. Another thing to keep in mind about goats is that they do have a tendency to resist the exhibitor from time to time. If a goat starts to resist or not walk appropriately, it is acceptable to reach back and grab the, the switch of the goat to get it to move properly. 
Um, once you have the goat moving properly again, make sure that you switch your hands back to the halter or choke chain um, closest to the, to the goat. Your hands traditionally are going to be palm forward, thumb is going to be pointing away from you, um, and then when you're switching sides, also remember to switch hands naturally. Be relaxed as you switch from side to side without being too abrupt with it, as well as always move around the front of the goat and never behind the goat. This is the common practice throughout the goat showmanship competition. Each judge has their own way of, of, of showing, so it's important that you maybe watch the first class that goes into the show ring, and then everyone else traditionally is going to do the same pattern. Another thing that judges will traditionally do is have the uh, goat's rear view towards the spectators once they're placed. This is just more of a, a courtesy to the exhibitors so they can see what the judge is doing as far as placing the classes. If asked to move in line, make sure that you're timely. Move your goat forward um, and then always keep the goat between you and the judge and so your turning methods might uh, be different than they are with beef cattle. Um, make sure the goat's head comes towards you and you just switch hands and come back to that same hole and go to the new position from the rear of the line. Again they're looking more at how well you have your goat respond to you as the exhibitor. It is traditionally not desirable to have your goat make any more moves than desired. Remember that this goat showmanship is about character building. We want you to enjoy the goat show and have fun. All right, I've seen a lot of other great questions come through here. So while I'm getting the PowerPoint back up, if we want to ask some of those. Yes, Leanne, there has been, there are some really good questions in there. And um, one of them I did want to address, and it was a question on horns. Um, now, again, we're in North Dakota, and it might be a little bit different in your part of the country, but um, something that's important is that dairy goats are not supposed to have horns. Um, what is changing is that in the meat goat industry, it is starting to be where they want the weathers without horns, and, but the breeding class, they deem that the horns are part of their breed character. As a person that's uh, raising a few goats, I would say if you are going to dehorn goats, this is something that should be done when the goats are probably less than seven days of age. Um, dehorning is a very um, delicate uh, process, and you can you can really hurt your goats by trying to dehorn them if they're too old. Another one that I wanted to focus a little bit on is the proper fitting of the choke chains or halters. Um, the fastest way to lose any showmanship contest is to have a choke collar that is too big and the choke collar comes off because the goat might have pulled back a little bit and then um, you are on one end of the arena and your goat is on the other and this is not comfortable for a lot of exhibitors. So um, try, to, try to make sure they're, they're fit tight. Another question that came up is, uh, should you help someone else in the show ring if their goat is resisting them a little bit? I would say that it really depends. Can you safely help that person and is your help really helping them or is it um, taking away from the appearance of your goat? And so that's really a, a personal decision. Um, really, uh, you know, reach back if you're the exhibitor and your goat's getting a little stubborn, grab a hold of the tail or the switch, pull up on it. That's kind of like a go button. And then once they're going, you know, just kind of let that goat have a little bit of, uh, of relaxation and, and get them going. The other thing I would say is that um, the goats know if you're tense or you're, um, if you're really struggling with, uh, you know, keeping calm yourself, your goat will start to do the same type of thing. And so I would say just try to be relaxed and, and stay calm. Remember that they will do some funny things out there and they can make you look like you may be having a bad day, but, but just stay calm and, and uh, make it the most positive experience that you possibly can. 
We'll talk a little bit about, um, uh, I guess, in the meat goat industry about uh, maybe a question that came up last week with the sheep is that we always say start strong. Um, come into the class looking like you want to win. What does that look like? <coughs> Basically, the goat's head's held up high. You're alert. You're having fun. The goat's kind of listening to your commands. Setting the goats up. Um, I'm going to use the young man on the bottom here. That might be just a little bit too much um, interaction with the goat. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, you want to keep the goat's feet on the ground. You can lift that goat up a little bit to get the feet set square. And so a lot of the discussion is bracing. How strong should you brace a meat goat? This is a little bit more like a bear hug in a, in a wrestling competition. And so what it's doing is it's keeping the goat um, fighting the kid. And what's happening is the goat isn't pushing forward, it's pulling back. And it's actually affecting the feel of that goat in a negative way. Let them push forward. You can grab a hold of the, the jawbone a little bit or pull up on the head just a little bit to get that goat to push into your leg. But look at this young man and his goat's pulling the other direction in which we want. Um, you know, a lot of it is uh, keeping the, the goat set uh, square and keeping the head held up high. You want that head to be up um, because it does make them look more attractive. A goat that drops their head they have a tendency to look really short-fronted and, um, and, and less attractive. Um, other than that, um, you know, kind of there's some really good examples of the exhibitors out here and the way they're showing. Um, if you look at the bottom right picture, um, I'm going to say go to the first exhibitor um, and the fourth exhibitor in and notice how those goats' tails are up. Their top lines look, look more level. Their feet are set relatively square. And other kids, their, their feet might be off a little bit more than what we want um, for an ideal show position. Um, again, the goat's feet should be set square but comfortable underneath of them. Um, if I was to be a little bit critical about the, the paint um, dough in the, in the bottom picture, the one off to the left or closest to the judge, look at its front feet. The front feet are angled to go forward and they're not straight up and down. That goat is not in the best show position, and that can probably affect a little bit of the placing um, if it is a very close competition. Um, really keep the goat's head up high and feet set square, look like you're having fun, and goat showmanship is a tremendous experience for, for people that want to uh, take out these kids and uh, have a good, good experience. In the dairy goats, I would say, again, not that we um, change the, the maneuvers that we do from a dairy to a meat goat. I would say that uh, there's more difference in the meat goat industry of how we show the breeding meat goats versus the market meat goats. Again, you're going to brace the, the, the ones in the, in the weather classes or in the market classes, but um, other than that, the breeding classes in the meat goats is very similar to the dairy goats itself. I'm going to use a little bit of a uh, pick on a couple of things that I see with uh, the kids out here. Uh, we talked about um, in the bottom right uh, picture, look at the, where that choke um, collar is at. It's in the neck of that goat, not up in the jawbone. So that needs to be held way up right behind the base of the ears. And notice the way that it's um, reacting. That goat dropped its head, and this is not a goat that is expressing angularity and dairy character because of just how that choke chain is positioned on the goat. Um, a lot of the other ones are doing a very nice job. Um, again, the, the young lady in the bottom right, if she wants to grab below the knee, that goat will move its feet a little bit easier than um, to grab right at the knee. Um, there was the question of uh, squatting down. What is best? Should you squat down to give the, um, the judge the best view of the animal? And I would say that tall kids, you stay, you, you might be able to squat down, um, but my preference is, is to, to um, just stay standing, be relaxed, but also have a little bit of that competitive edge there. You want to look like you're there too 
to show. Maybe the more distracting part for me as a judge is the kids that overshow, um, where they stick their leg out and they're basically looking like they, um, you know, want to do the splits or something like that, or they're in gymnastics. I think that sometimes that's a very distracting view of um, of people that are out showing. I would say these these uh, in this picture are doing a very nice, relaxed, competitive look to them, but. Um, uh, I would say just don't overshow. I think that's more of a distraction than uh, maybe not being as intense as what you see in uh, um, some of the other exhibitors. Okay, and really it comes down to you um, as an exhibitor. You want to make sure you're following the dress code that the that's set by show management. Be clean, look sharp. Um, I think that. Um, we, we can all have a positive experience. I think anytime you get into showmanship, you wanna know the basics of your animal. Learn more about your project. Your project is more than just about walking it around a show ring in the, in the showmanship side, even though I think that's extremely important. Learn about the, what are the two um, types of meat that you get from a meat goat, and that's really dependent upon their, their weight. Um, you know, know about the breeds, about breed character, about structural correctness, about um, a lot of other things that go along with being a competitive exhibitor and learning more about the industry. Um, this next uh, bullet point goes to uh, back to the question of whether you help someone else get their animal uh, moving or not. I would say that really you want to make sure that your animal looks its best. Try to not get in the, you know, get so close to the next animal. Try to save two feet if the ring allows um, from when you pull into line um, versus the next one. Um, even in the bottom picture here, I think that the young lady in the middle there, she's probably just a little bit closer than what she needs to be to the goat in front. Um, she's not leaving herself a lot of room to uh, move from side to side if that's going to be required by the, the judge. If the judge goes to the left side of this, this line, she's gonna have a little bit of a tight corner to get to the, the right side of the goat. If we move again from left to right, just do it relaxed and calm. And sometimes you can wait until the judge gets on to the next animal before you uh, make that maneuver. But really it's your calmness and collectiveness that um, we, we really appreciate seeing in showmanship contests. Remember it's a learning experience and the, you, you never get done learning. There's always something that's gonna you know, pop up. Maybe you've got an animal like we talked earlier that just wants to be uh, an entertainer out there instead of uh, one that wants to go out and show itself. Uh, you know, learning how to react to those situations. I think it's teaching life skills. How do you react to um, some confrontation? And the confrontation here might be with your goat, but how you react really pays dividends long term when you look back at what you learned in your, your show career. All right. Thank you so much, Rick. Um, with that, I think we're ready to answer a lot of these incredible questions that have been asked. So um, I think we've got a lot of them recorded and we'll get those rolling. Rick, uh, a couple of questions maybe just on, uh, on getting your go ready. Um, so one of them is how do we get rid of dry skin? And are you allowed to clip the extra ear hair? Sure, good questions, Travis. Um, you know, I guess a, a lot of it, if they get dandruff uh, because of, uh, if you clip them and you leave them out in the sun, it does have a tendency to dry their skin. And so how do you get it back into condition? I would say, you know, using like a baby oil and wiping them down with a, a, a dry or a cloth that's, uh, that you put a little bit of baby oil on, that can bring back some of the natural oils in the skin. It will take, a, you know, a, a couple of weeks but I would say when you when you clip those goats down, especially if you're body clipping them, try to avoid a long um, hours of direct sunlight because that does have a tendency to dry those um, those uh, hides out on these these animals. As far as clipping the ears, I would say it's really dependent upon um, you know the the goat and how how bad it is. You can you can maybe trim out the long hairs on a um, especially on the dairy goats, but on the meat goats, I I would say you know, it can actually add as a, they don't get very long in the first place, but, um, you know, it can actually add to some, 
you know, stoutness appearance and some different um, general appearance of the animal as well. Um, I don't, I wouldn't consider that to be a real big issue unless it does have a tendency to get long hairs and you might be able to trim them back. And sure, and hopefully we can clean the ears of those animals before we take them out for showmanship as well. A couple things in terms of presentation uh, that have been asked is uh, should the goat's tail be up? And then we've had this uh, also um, talked about that I think maybe we can think about as well is how do you help one with a sway back? And so if it's broken behind its shoulder, is there anything we can do to make that look a little bit better on the side profile? Yeah, I think there is. And sometimes, you know, just um, maybe squatting down and, uh, you know, trying to um, push up a little bit on the, on the lower belly, right behind that chest floor, um, it can help bring it up. Another one, um, you know, as far as fixing a top line, you can do so much, but as an exhibitor, I like you to identify the faults and try to fix as much as you can as an exhibitor. Maybe it's pushing the loin down a little bit might help uh, level that top line out and then the, um, the rack or the, the shoulder doesn't look as weak. The question was is that do we like the tail heads to be up? Yeah, I think it does make them look more showy, but goats will raise their tail if they want. Um, and that comes from if they're happy and relaxed, they have more of a tendency to uh, bring their tails up. And if they're in a bad uh, temperamental mood, they will drop their tail down between their legs. And I don't care what you do, you're not going to get that goat to bring it up unless it, it relaxes again. Good questions. There's a few questions just regarding, we've talked about goats being really stubborn and sometimes you, you can't always do anything about that, but do you have any tips and tricks um, just to help with them jumping or pulling or wanting to lay down and roll, um, things like that and, as, that you would utilize in the training process? I think in the training process there is. Um, you know, I guess I like to have uh, maybe a goat that is trained to kind of lead the way. I know when we start training, um, we always like to uh, um, have a couple of them that behave quite well and they're the leaders of the, of the pack when we go out and, and walk. Um, I also think that um, taking your goat through the show ring um, at the competition, maybe a, a couple of hours before the show starts and get him used to that uh, um, environment can help out some. Um, and the only other thing really is about practicing. Um, you can, you know, some goats, it takes a long time before they're going to really listen to your commands. Others pick up pretty quick. The pulling back thing, you know, I guess I'm a, I'm a believer that we are advocates for the industry that we represent, no matter what species that is. And so I do see some kids, um, unfortunately, that might, you know, tap the goat on, on the hip or whatever to get them to push forward. Um, I'm going to say that you know, we do have people watching our every move, it seems like when we go into competition and if you're gonna do that at home, you know, kind of, um, you know, keep it in perspective. But when you get to the shows, I don't wanna see any of that uh, type of behavior. Um, you know, um, backing goats up, um, a couple of, uh, at home, they can learn to start resisting that. Um, we had a comment last week, I think that can be very good, but back them into an uncomfortable position where they may want to push forward or back them into a water puddle. If they don't like water, they will, you know, have a tendency then to change their mind and say, yeah, moving forward might not be such a bad idea. Um, kind of just uh, practicing and getting to know your goat. Um, I would say there's really no one thing that's going to work in every situation, but, um, uh, you know, practice and find out what that might be for your particular animal um, to make it better. Uh, Rick, uh, one quick question or just comment there. We've had a, several times of if your goat jumps, primarily when they're training them, uh, their goat likes to jump and then roll over, and or if it jumps in the ring. And it, uh, I think that obviously that one's just largely based on hopefully getting some training and some time and effort. But uh, anything in particular at that point? I think uh, you, you bring up some good points, uh, Dr. Hoffman. Um, you know, I guess uh, I would say that the vast majority of goats are going to play dead at least 100 times before they start to walk at a normal, uh, normal pace and uh, do exactly what you want. Um, that, that really comes from the practice thing. Um, I would say a lot of it really goes back to 
um, how you react to that. Um, are you going to let the goat kind of lay there and say, yes, you know, um, I can wait until you're ready to get up. Or if you're one that's uh, very impatient and you, you grab a hold of it and, you know, make it stand, they're just going to lay back down on you again. Um, I would say the big thing is, is to keep calm. Um, those goats will learn, or at least the vast majority of them will learn. Um, when you get into the show time and they do that, well, let's just classify it as having a bad day. Um, you, you probably aren't going to change their demeanor at that time. Um, but, uh, you know, just kind of work through it and keep calm. I like the question that come up um, right now uh, about deworming goats. I would say that it is important to get your goats dewormed probably every 30 days, um, at least maybe two or three times uh, throughout the summer. Um, um, I think it really helps in keeping the hair looking healthy and growing nice. It gives them a better hair coat. If they're not dealing with parasites that are uh, affecting their, their condition, um, that's a really good question, and I'm glad that you asked. Can you address a little bit um, age and weights um, in regards to market? Yeah, you know, and I guess um, I would say that uh, th this is a really good question, too, because there's not a great answer. Um, a 60 pound goat that has structure that is built to perfection, the kid's got a condition right and presented well, this goes back to the class itself. I think a 60 pound goat can beat an 80 pound goat if it's built right. Um, is there an ideal weight? I would say, um, you know, I, maybe in your particular states it might be different. I like goats maybe in the 80 pound range, but a goat can keep its condition and um, um, its its appearance probably up to 100 pounds, any heavier than that. I'm not a, I don't think it really fits the, the market. But remember, we always sell on pounds, it seems like, and they're bigger and still maintain their condition well, they can be very competitive and win those classes as well. I'm not a big fan of goats, maybe under 60 pounds in market classes, but um, good goats should win no matter what their weight is. We had a, a question repeated a couple of times in regards to um, if you could talk about the dairy scorecard that is utilized. Yes, actually there is a dairy cattle scorecard and there is a dairy goat scorecard that's out there. And what that is, it basically gives um, how many points are accredited to different parts of the animal. Um, they'll do it in a showmanship scorecard as well. Like if we're basing 25%, um, I'm just gonna give some examples. If 25% of the points that you receive out of 100 comes from the presentation of your animal and how clip, well clipped it is, if it's washed, there might be another 25, 30 points as to how the exhibitor presents themselves. And uh, maybe the, there's some, some on the confirmation of the animal. Um, is the animal fed right? Is the animal, um, you know, uh, they, they, they can put points on, on structure very easily in showmanship classes as well, because they're saying, you know, did you go out and pick a good animal to win? Um, some judges will evaluate that score or use that scorecard differently. But when we get into placing the classes, the scorecard is used very heavily. I'm gonna say in dairy, um, in dairy goats in particular, um, the mammary of the goat is about 40% of what is accredited to the final score in the end. Then um, another large percentage, maybe around 25, 30% is, is that goat angular and sharp and clean in their withers, free of fat. That's all terms that get classified into to dairy appearance. And so we do use that unified scorecard, um, both from the placing of classes as well as, as showmanship. Not all species have a very uh, broad, broadly advertised uh, scorecard, but, but they are out there in, in almost all species. Another dairy question that came in was, what side of the goat do you set up first? 
It depends on um, which side the judge is on. Again, you want to keep the go between you and the judge. And I like to set, I, I personally like to set the, the back feet first, then the front feet, because the front feet are always easier. I would say just, just set them up. Um, I don't think that that's really critical. What, what's more important to me than which end you set up first is that once you think you have them set up and your goat's feet are offset, you know, probably by four, six inches in um, front or back feet and you're not paying attention to it. That to me is something that um, you're not giving that goat its best appearance to the judge and that would be faulted more than, you know, whether you reached under or over or um, set the back feet first or the front feet first. Make sure they're set square and, and do it relatively quick. I like to make sure that, I guess the, the format that I use is that you set the goat first, then you find the judge, and then you worry about how you look, and that you're not slouched down and looking like you uh, wanna be uh, off to meet with your friends at the, uh, the carnival and <laughs> you gotta give that appearance that you don't care. I think those are the three big things goat or your animal is first and you make sure that looks its best then know where the judge is at you can kind of keep one eye on the judge and then uh um you know one eye on, on the, you know your physical appearance and then really i would say it comes down to just keep that competitive look until the show is totally over and you've exited the ring good questions i like that Another question that was asked a couple times was um, talking about lice control and recommendations for that. Yep, you can use permectrin. Um, there's D lices out there, um, and they will help take care if it's uh, due to a parasite um, that might be living in the hair. Um, you know, I guess usually we only um, D lice them with the permectrin or you know as an active ingredient maybe twice a year. But if you've got a rough hair coat. Um, I would I would suggest that you know maybe you try to um, de-lice them, deworm them, and uh, usually that will bring that hair coat back into a, a shiny, more show appearance uh, um, within a couple of weeks. Do you have any tips and tricks on catching those sneaking goats? <laughs> um, safely, because if they resist you, that seems like they're going to run into a wall or they're going to potentially hurt themselves in the pen. What I've seen most successful, and it's basically a catch gate. It's, um, they're about uh, maybe three feet long, and there's two three feet long gates that um, have a ring between them, and you can basically make a little catch pen and bring that gate around, and then it just traps them in a small pen. Um, but I do really like those, they, they don't get hurt in those, those catch gates, and I think that can be a real nice addition to uh, your, your pens at home. You don't wanna see a goat crack into the wall very hard because they can, they can break a neck, and then it's, then it's nothing you can do about that anymore. Rick, do you think there's any difference in the gender of the goat of which may behave better on weather or doe? And a follow-up is, uh, can uh, that was asked is can we put bows and decoration on our goat for fun? Well, you know that boys are more mild mannered, right, Travis? <laughs> no, actually, there probably is not a lot of difference in genders. Um, um, I would say it's probably more about genetics than it is about the gender. Um, if you want to decorate them up, I guess to me, you know, that's a personal decision. I would say you have to be careful that uh, you don't overdo it because you might have some uh, other spectators that might think that that's maybe not appropriate, but you wanna, I don't know, I guess that's a personal decision. I wouldn't give any extra credit for doing it. Um, you know, even putting on like the fancy choke collars or um, halters or that type of thing. I mean, it's fine to do it. I don't give any extra credit or take any um, points away for those who decide to go that route. Do you have any specific differences that you would like to point out between um, exhibiting our meat goats and our dairy goats and, and showing them in the ring? You know, I think that um, you do have a bit more physical contact with the, the meat goats. Um, you have it even in the breeding classes, you'll put a, a leg in front, get them to push a little bit. 
Um, I think that the, what are, we're looking for in the quality of the animals is different. And so the way that we show is a little bit different. But the maneuvers, the way you work around the goats does not change from meat goats to dairy goats. I would say that um, to answer your question, uh, Lindsay, is that the meat goats in the market classes is that know what the appropriate level of bracing is. A goat that pushes really, really hard into your leg um, is going, some goats, they will start to have a really distinct line that shows up between their loin and their, and their hip. And um, they will actually start to brace too hard that that affects the appearance of their top line. And I don't think that over bracing them is necessary. Um, but you do want them to push forward um, when, when the judge is coming to handle them. Um, in the, in the, Meat breeds, the, the Spanish boars and the boars and the pygmies, um, you know, you kind of want to maybe grab a hold of the, the head a little bit and, and uh, kind of get them positioned right. Um, but um, um, you are a little bit more in contact. In the dairy goats, you really don't ever grab the head to position them or to hold them. You do everything with the, the uh, choke chain or the, or the halter itself. And so you do keep a little bit more distance on the dairy side, but um, you know, I guess uh, th there's, there's more similarities in the way that we show the two um, classifications of goats than there are differences. Other than maybe, like I said, the market classes where we just physically will have them push into a, the, the thigh or the, the leg of the exhibitor and others do not. Could you, since you just talked on bracing, could you kind of walk us through getting your goat to start bracing? And then also somebody had asked about making sure that their legs, you know, training them to stay in place and keeping them square. Yeah, um, you know, I guess, to, sure. Um, you know, I guess to get them to brace, this is a little secret that, you know, uh, we've heard from people that go to the sales when you might buy these goats, or maybe you go to your, your farm flocks and, and figure out, um, you know, which ones are gonna uh, be your show animals for the year. Grab them, take them out of the rack. And some goats are bracing at 30 pounds of age and those goats are just gonna be easy. They will brace their whole life. Others, if they have a tendency to be a little stubborn and they pull back and they fight you, fight you when you um, grab them, they might be more of a challenge to get to that, um, true bracing uh, pose, but you can actually um, back goats up until they start to, res to resist. And goats usually will start to brace um, with, with practice. Um, um, other than that, you know, I guess, uh, I, I don't know that I got any, a ton of secrets behind that, but um, you know, just uh, get, it. the one thing that's different I would say with goats is, you know, pulling the tail up, to get them to push forward, not gonna work with most goats. You know, tapping the dock of a lamb will get them to push forward, but goats, that's like um, hitting the reverse button on them. Um, they just have a tendency to not like that, and it's not gonna help to get them to brace. So basically, back them up a little bit until you, um, um, you know, get some resistance, and then just let them, let it become their idea, and let them know that you're not gonna hurt them, um, by, by having them push back into you a little bit. Might be the hardest part about showing goats is to get them to, to pose right and to brace on the market side. Another one along the training side of things is just for the ones that are really herd bound and getting them to, to leave their buddies behind. <laughs> um, yeah, they're, 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 those are uh, common issues with goats as well. Um, I would just say to take them out to the show ring a couple times prior to the, the show. Some of them will cry the whole time, um, but I would say the more times you take them out there, they, they will get over it in time. But uh, try, to, try to practice that at home a little bit more where they get away from their buddies um, for periods of time and maybe build that time up a little bit more um, as the summer progresses, and, and they will get over it, um, but it just might take a while for some of them.
Um, going back, I, I think this one was asked quite a while ago, but uh, if the judge touches the goat, are we supposed to brush it off? You know, it's, it's a personal preference. I always think that it, um, you can take your hand and kind of wipe it down um, if you want. I would say what's probably more critical is if the judge went and put something on your goat. It used to be, you know, back years ago, they'd take like a little bit of sawdust and put it on the backs of the goat just to see if you clean it off. I would say if they, if they do put something on your goat, make sure you clean it up and to make sure that goat's physical appearance is the way you want it to be very quickly. Um, actually, it bring me to more of a question I think that's more important in the, um, Dr. Hoffman talked about this last week with the sheep, but once you get your goat set up, don't have a hand that rests on the top of the goat. Um, you, you get it set up, you get, you know, if you're gonna put some hair back or whatever you wanna do, get it looking good and then get your hands away from the goat so the judge can see 100% um, view of that animal. And by resting a goat or maybe placing a hand over top of the goat does take away from that appearance that the judge is looking for. Oh, I think we're kind of coming to the end of some of the questions. And one of the last ones I have are just, if you could talk about some of the good things that kids can research before going into the showmanship ring and getting asked questions by the judge. You know, th there is, there's a tremendous amount of information that's out there. I would say learn the breeds, um, you know, I guess, uh, and the unique characteristics of the different breeds. If you do get asked questions in a showmanship contest about, you know, if you have to go to a different animal, they might ask you, what breed is it? You know, uh, learn um, how much milk does a dairy goat produce? And it depends upon the breed of the dairy goat, which breed of goat has the very, very short ears in the breeding classes and know that those are La Manchas, the ones with the long droopy ears that look like they got Dumbo ears that they could fly or what? They're Nubians. And just kind of learn that, you know, some of the different characteristics about the different breeds. Um, in the in the meat goats, um, you know, know what uh, an ideal or what you perceive to be the ideal weight of a goat might be. Um, know the names of what goat meat is called as a, a protein source. Um, know the parts of your animal. I think those are all things that you can research prior to any show. Um, what's nice is that the parts of a goat are the same no matter if it's a breeding or a market. Um, or a, a, a dairy um, goat, they're all kind of the same. Um, what is goat meat? Uh, what is goat meat called as a protein source? If I caught that, um, this was part of our uh, livestock quiz bowl. If anybody had uh, paid attention to that, what do we have, uh, Dr. Hoffman? We have Siobhan and what's the the smaller? A cabrito. Cabrito. There we go. <laughs> Yep, the two different names of goat meat, Cabrito and Siobhan. Good questions. They are really good questions. I've had a couple, um, Coco was asking, what dewormer do you recommend? Excellent question. Um, I'm gonna put them in classifications and I'm not gonna recommend if you're using Valbazin or um, Ivamectrin or any of those types of things, but. I would say what's important as a classification is that you can use the clear um, dewormers when they are not pregnant um, and pregnant, but if they got like a milky texture to them, those might be some that you want to read the label and make sure that it may not cause abortion in your goats. Um, that's just a, a generalization. Another thing to keep in mind is we want you to rotate the types of dewormers from one, um, one time that you do a dewormer and then the next time you do it, try a different dewormer because it will help take out different parasites, possibly. So if you're having to deworm multiple times, maybe the one thing that you might be missing is to change the uh, active ingredient in the dewormers itself. Well, thank you so much for answering that question. 
you know, we have had such polite individuals on this message board complimenting how wonderful that this particular one has been. So thank you, Rick, for all of your time and energy that you've put into here. And thank you, um, Dr. Hoffman and Lindsay for helping me keep track of the chat box and answer all these wonderful questions. Yes, see, the slideshow will be available. I will actually be posting the recorded link once it's edited on our Facebook page. So I'm gonna post that link in here. If you wanna connect with us, definitely visit us on our Facebook page um, to have other opportunities to engage with us and learn some more. So I thank have you. one more question. Sure. Well, mainly it's the weight of the goat because if you were to, the required to know the way of the goat, what would it mainly be, or how much does it have to weigh, or how much could it weigh? You know, that's a good good question. Um, I would say that you want them to be um, probably in that 60 to 100 pounds in good condition, and um, you want to you want to weigh them periodically to make sure that they're growing a little bit. Sometimes goats are really hard to put weight on. Um, but make sure they're healthy and uh, they have enough condition on without getting fat. Um, and that's kind of a rough question. Before we all get off of here, I do wanna make sure that um, you guys are aware that we are putting together a publication. There will be a written document as well and we're finishing that up. If you guys wanna go back and use that as a reference guide. And uh, we wanna thank uh, Leanne and the, uh, the crew here to help uh, make this a, a really unified um, showmanship uh, uh, program that you guys can all participate in, but um, you can go back and look at the videos as well as when we finish up the last details on the manual itself or the, the guide book, um, make sure you check that out as well. Yes, thank you so much, Rick. Thank you all for joining us today. We are so excited that there were 20 different states on this call tonight. And so pretty awesome reach. And we are just so proud of all of you. We definitely hope you guys stay safe and have a great evening.